Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this morning we are reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 10, Chapter 1, entitled The Advent of Lord Krishna, Introduction. And today we are treating from text 46 to 53. So there are eight verses. <coughs> so text 46 says, Shri <coughs> Shuka Uvacha Evam sa samambir bedai Bodhya manopid duranaha Nanya vatata karul kauravya Purushadam anurataha Wait for word translation Shri Shuka Ovacha <clears throat> Sri Shukadeva Goswami said, Evam, in this way, Saha, he, Kamsa, Samabir, by attempts to pacify Kamsa, Bedai, by moral instructions, that one should not be cruel to anyone else. Bodhya Manaha Api Even being pacified Darunaha He who was the most fiercely cruel Na Nya Vartata Could not be stopped From the grievous act Kauravya O Maharaj Parikshit Purusha Adan, the Rakshasha man eaters, Anuvrataha, following in their footsteps. Translation Shukadeva Goswami continued, O oh, best of the Kuru dynasty, Kamsa was fiercely cruel and was actually a follower of the Rakshasas. Therefore, he could not, so therefore he could be neither pacified nor terrified by the good instruction given by Vasudev. He did not care about the results of sinful activities, either in this life or the next. We'll go to the next verse. I'll just turn this look and then we we'll go on to translation of purport. <clears throat> Nirbandam tasya tam gyatra vinchin tiana kanu kandu budir praptam kalam prati viodun idam tatra vapa diataha. Translation When Vasudev saw that Kamsa was determined to kill his sister Devaki, he thought to himself very deeply, considering the imminent Danger of death, he thought of another plan to stop cancer. Sri Prabhupada's purport, although Vasudev saw the imminent danger that his wife Devaki would be killed, he was convinced of his welfare because at his birth, the demigods had played drums and kettle drums. He therefore attempted another way to save Devaki. We read the third verse. We says, Mirityo buddhi matta pohyo yavat buddhi palo dhyam yadi asona nivarteta na paradosti dehinaha 
translation. As long as he has intelligence and bodily strength, an intelligent person must try to avoid death. This is the duty of every embodied person. But if death cannot be avoided in spite of one's endeavors, a person facing death commits no offense. Shri Prabhupada's purport. It is natural for a person facing untimely death to try his best to save himself. This is one's duty. Although death is sure, everyone should try to avoid it and not meet death without opposition because every living soul is by nature eternal. Because death is a punishment imposed in the conditioned life of material existence, the Vedic culture is based on avoiding death. Everyone should try to avoid death and rebirth by cultivating spiritual life and should not submit to death without struggling to survive. One who is not trying to stop death is not an intelligent human being because Devaki was face to face with imminent death. It was Vasudev's duty to save her as he was trying his best to do. He therefore considered another way to approach cancer so that Devaki would be saved. That's my Sayyidunave Namaha. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam, Papitam Yenabutale, Slayam Rupa Kadamahim, Dadati Sapadanticum, Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yukta, Patakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sha, Sri Rupam Sakrajatam, Sahagana Ragunastam Bitam Tam Sajivam. Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Sya Namao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Nirvese sasyavadi pasacha de satarini. Vanchakal patarubhyascha kripa sindubhyayivacha. Patitanam pavini bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namaha. Namo maha vadanyaya krishna prema pradayate. Krishnaya krishna chaitanya namini gauratvize namaha. Nityanado vatutendur vasuda pranavalabaha. Janavir Givita Patir Krishna Prema Prada Prabhu Padma Vati Sutta Srimam Sachirananda Purva Jaha Bhavom Mata Jagatrakta Rakta Gora Kalevaraha Advaitam Harina Dvaita Racharyam Bhakti Shamsanat Bhaktavataram Itam Samarvaita Acharya Ashraye Panchatatuamakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhaktavataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakti Shaktikam Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopita Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Jayatam Surato Pango Mama Madhir Gati Marsarva Swapadam Bhujo Radha Madana Mohano Divyad Vrindaranyang Kalpadrumada Sri Matradnat Garasimhastan Stau Sri Sri Radha Sri Lagovinda Devo Pristyali Bhisivya Manos Marami Shri Mamra Sarasarambi Vamsiva Tata Tastita Karsa Venu Swanai Gopi Gopi Nata Stustan Naha Taptakam Chana Gaurangi Radhe Brindhavani Shuri Vrishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Siyarvaita Gararhar Shiva Sadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. So, <clears throat> before we say something, we would like to seek the blessings of all these exalted Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis assembled here this morning. In particular, I would seek the blessings of his grace. Sankrishan Nitai Prabhu. Krishna Kanai Prabhu. And many other wonderful, wonderful devotees here. Sai Loki and Prabhu. Wonderful devotees. So, um, <clears throat> this is a very trying moment for Vasudev and Devaki. Um, the happiest moment for a woman is her wedding day. <laughs> that is the happiest moment for a woman. The day she gets wedded and she is 100% sure that he has a responsible husband to take care of her needs, to give her protection, to give her guidance. So it is said that is the happiest moment of every woman. Unfortunately, for Devaki, it was the most miserable moment in her life because she was faced with a threat of death. Instead of her celebrating that very auspicious moment of having a wonderful husband like Vasudev, it was a very miserable moment. Because of the prophecy that was heard from the ethereal voice. So, um, here we see in these three verses that um, Kamsa is described as the most cruel Kamsa is described fiercely cruel and follower of the Rakshashas. Therefore, he could not be pacified by any good instructions from Vasudev. In fact, two words used here, Samabir and Bidai. Garbo Brune Arbake Kusho Iti Adi. That when Kamsa was about to kill Devaki, Vasudev had to dissuade him by diplomacy. And so Samar and Beda 
I considered the two aspects of diplomacy. Sama means pacifying. So, Vasudev pacified Kamsa by indicating relations, relationships, by indicating gain, by indicating welfare, by indicating identity, and by glorification. So these five concerns are called Sama. But Kamsa was so cruel that this was not appealing to him. Then Vasudev has to use another system, which is called Beda. Beda means to um, to induce fear. The fear of sinful reactions in the present and in the future. So, Vasudev had to tell Kamsa that if you kill your sister, it is going to bring some suffering to you. And it might even create some war within your family. So in this way, Vasudev has to find ways and means to dissuade Kamsa from killing his own sister. But it is said that despite all these methods that we use, Kamsa remains stubborn because he was a personification of atheism. He was a personification of atheism. He does not believe in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He does not believe in anything religious. So therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Mogasa Moga Karamano. Moga Gyana Vikita Saha. And those who are bewildered and are attracted by demonic, atheistic views, their hopes for liberation, their fruitive activities, and their culture of knowledge are all defeated. So therefore, it is not surprising that Kamsa would be defeated because he was the personification of atheism. The next verse, it talks about Vasudev was convinced of his welfare because at his birth, the demigods played drums and kettle drums. Therefore, despite the cruel and demonic attitude of Kamsa, Vasudev was convinced within himself that he will succeed. So one may ask, why did the demigods play drums at the time of the birth of Vasudev? It is said that Bharat Vasa is a pious land. And in this pious land, 
There is the most pious place, which is Matura. And in this pious place, a very exalted personality, a very pious person, in the personality of Vasudev, was born. And we know that Vasudev had, and his wife, they had been Krishna's parents in two lives. And now, they are going to become Krishna's parents again, the third time. So the demigods are aware that this is a very exalted personality. And therefore, when Vasudev took his birth, the demigods were celebrating. So it is said that Vasudev is the manifestation of, of absolute knowledge. It's a manifestation of pure goodness. Because without being in the mode of pure goodness, he could not become the father of the supreme personality of Godhead. So Vasudev's position is very special. And Shlapropa mentions in the Krishna book how Krishna, first of all, took shelter in the mind of Vasudev and then settled in the heart of Vasudev. And Vasudev transferred Krishna to the heart of Devaki. So, because Vasudev was such an exalted devotee, exalted personality, he could conceive the Supreme Personality of Godhead within his mind. And he transferred the Supreme Personality of Godhead to his heart. And from there, he transferred the Supreme Personality of Godhead to the heart of Devaki. And so, Srila Prabhupada mentions, that is the process of initiation. When a spiritual master initiates a disciple, it is said to be a heart-to-heart -heart connection. So Vasudev was such an exalted person, he could transfer the Supreme Personality of Godhead from his heart to the heart of his wife. And therefore, the demigods, they celebrated his appearance in this world. So on one side is the most cruel person, Kamsa. On the other side is the most pious Pure goodness personified personality, Vasudev. And now Vasudev is put in a situation where he has to glorify such an impious person. So that is that is a difficulty. <laughs> when a pious, when an impious person glorifies a pious person, is benefiting to him, is beneficial to him. But when a pious person glorifies an impious person, it is dangerous. It increases his trouble. So, um, in the third verse, which is 48, actually in this um, second verse, Shlavishna Chakravati Thakur says that at the birth of Vasudev, the demigods sounded drums, dudumbi, therefore noting noting with this certainty in mind, Navasude was ananka dudumbi. That is another name of Vasudev. The demigods noted that this is a, this exalted person. So they are drumming, they are celebrating. So the demigods, they celebrated Vasudev's appearance. And in the third verse, it says, an intelligent person must avoid death. As Shana Prabhupada mentions, that one must fight against death. So, Death is not avoidable because this is Masha Loka. 
It is an abode of death. Once you take birth in this material world, death is sure. But, Shana Prabhupada mentions untimely death. In other words, one has to fight against uncertain death, untimely death, unwanted death. Natural death is there. One is supposed to live a certain number of years before he meets his death. That is natural. But when one dies young or one dies due to certain circumstances, like the case of Devaki, Devaki is not supposed to die at the time of her wedding. This is untimely death. It's unnatural. And therefore, an intelligent person must avoid it. Ashana Prabhupada mentions that So, the way, the best way to, to avoid death is to become Krishna conscious. Actually, the whole process of Krishna consciousness is for avoiding death. Because so long as we are in the material world, you have to experience death. But as soon as you get out of this material world, by the process of Krishna consciousness, you avoid death. So the process of Krishna consciousness is for avoiding death. So therefore, the devotees are the most intelligent people because they understand that by understanding the appearance of the Lord, the activities of the Lord, one can avoid death. So Shla Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says, as long as a person has power and intelligence, he must try to avoid death. Since I cannot use my strength to avoid Devaki's death at Kamsan's hand, I can use my intelligence. Yavad Budi. So, Vasudev cannot use his strength. Kamsa is very powerful. Kamsa is very strong. So, Vasudev cannot defeat him in physical strength. So now he has to use his intelligence. So therefore, um, we have to increase our activities in Krishna consciousness more and more and more. And that is the sign of intelligence. That is the, that is the, the process by which we can overcome death. In 49 and 50, it says that Vasudev considered by delivering all my sons to Kamsa, who is death personified, I shall save the life of Devaki. Perhaps Kamsa will die before my sons take birth, or since he is already destined to die at the hands of my son, one of my sons may kill him. For the time being, let me promise to hand over my sons so that Kamsa will give up this immediate threat. And if in due course of time, Kamsa dies, I shall have nothing to fear. In the paper Prabhupada writes, Vasudev wanted to save the life of Devaki by promising to deliver his sons to Kamsa. In the future, he thought Kamsa may die or may not beget any, or I may not beget any sons. Even if a son is born, I deliver him to Kamsa, Kamsa may die at his hands. For by providence, Anything could happen. It is very difficult to understand how things are managed by providence. Thus, Vasudev decided that he will promise to deliver his sons to the hands of Kamsa in order to save Devaki from the imminent, imminent danger of death. And then in 51, he says, When fire, for some unseen reason, leaps over one piece of wood and sets fire to the next, the reason is destiny. Similarly, when a living being accepts one kind of body and leaves aside another, there is no other reason than 
unseen destiny. And the purpose of prayer writes, when there is a fire in a village, the fire sometimes jumps over one house and burns another. Similarly, when there is a forest fire, the fire sometimes jumps over one tree and catches another. Why this happens, no one can say. One may set forth some imaginary reason why the nearest tree or house did not catch fire, whereas a tree or house in a distant place did. But actually, the reason is destiny. This reason also applies to the transmigration of the soul by which a prime minister in one life be may become a dog in the next. <laughs> the work of unseen destiny cannot be ascertained by practical experimental knowledge. And therefore, one must be satisfied by reasoning that everything is done by some providence. So, so, Vasudev Dave is in a very tense situation. Because he has to find a way to deliver his wife from the hands of Kamsa. Therefore, he thought that the best way forward is to offer Kamsa the very source of, his, of the danger of his death. So, because the prophecy says that the eighth child shall be responsible for Kamsa's death. So therefore, Vasudev thought, if I offer these children who are yet to be born to Kamsa, that means he has control of the source or the cause of his death. Devaki is not the cause of his death. It's the children of Devaki who would cause the death of Kamsa. Therefore, if I deliver my children to him, he might spare the life of Devaki. So, Shilavishan Chakravaritako says, the Vasudev debates in his mind, I will give my sons to the personification of death, Pradaya Mritave. But Vasudev thinks it is improper to deliver his sons to Kamsa. But again, he's thinking, Maybe I may not have children. So if I can save my wife, if I don't have any children, then there's no problem. And maybe Kamsa may even die before I beget any child. So for now, let me just find a reason to deliver my wife from Kamsa. Whatever follows later will be taken care of. My children may be strong enough to kill Kamsa, but how can infant sons kill such a strong person like Kamsa? Then Vasudev concluded, the ways of the Lord are hard to comprehend. Providence has proclaimed that the eighth child of Devaki will be responsible for the death of Kamsa. Therefore, it is better we save Kamsa, we save Devaki from the hands of Kamsa by promising him the cause of his death. And actually, this plan worked out. When, when Vasudev used Sama and Bedai to try to dissuade Kamsa, it didn't work. But when he used this, it worked. So the unseen destiny cannot be ascertained by practical experimental knowledge. Therefore, one must be satisfied by reasoning that everything is done by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Actually, despite the advancement in knowledge, in our modern times, we have advanced so much in knowledge. And academicians are very proud 
of their advancement in knowledge. But actually, despite this advancement in knowledge, we cannot check the activities of providence. We cannot. Therefore, Shalavishan Chakravari Takru says, what I've decided upon is not improbable, for, not, for no living entity can escape the fate of death, even cancer. So, the, the leaping of fire from one house to another house far away, jumping over other houses, or the leaping of fire in a forest over a certain number of trees to other trees in a distance, is to illustrate how destiny works. This is the attribute of faith. So therefore, the only way is to depend on the supreme personality of Godhead. The way providence works, no amount of material knowledge can can determine when the hands of providence will come upon us. But if we depend on Krishna, who is the master of providence, Maya Dakshina Prakriti Suyate Sacharacharam, Krishna is the master of providence, then our position is secure. So therefore, Vasudev. Uh, understood that providence is in control. So let me just do what is necessary, what is needed right now, and the rest of it, providence will take care. In the um, 52 and 53, it says, after thus considering the matter as far as his knowledge could allow, Vasudev submitted his proposal to the sinful cancer with great respect. And in 53 he says, Vasudev's mind was full of anxiety because his wife was facing danger. But in order to please a cruel, shameless, and sinful counselor, he externally smiled and spoke to him as follows. In the purpose of the Prabhupada writes, sometimes one must act duplicitously in a dangerous position, as Vasudev did to save his wife. The material world is complicated, and to execute one's duties, one cannot avoid adopting such diplomacy. Vasudev did everything possible to save his wife for the sake of begetting Krishna. This indicates that one may act duplicitously for the purpose of saving Krishna and his interests. According to the arrangement already foretold, Krishna was to appear through Vasudev and Devaki to kill Kamsa. Vasudev therefore had to do everything to save the situation. Although all the events were prearranged by Krishna, a devotee must try his best to serve the purpose of Krishna. Krishna himself is all powerful, but it is not that a devotee should therefore sit idly and leave everything to Krishna. This instruction is also found in Bhagavad Gita. Although Krishna was doing everything for Arjuna, Arjuna never sat down idly as a non-violent gentleman. Rather, he tried his best to fight the battle and be victorious. So, acting in duplicitous manner in times of danger is sometimes required. Because Vasudev did everything possible to save the life of Devaki. And this was service to Krishna. Because Krishna was to appear as a son of Devaki and Vasudev. And here is the danger that Devaki will be killed. So how will Krishna appear? So therefore, as service to Krishna, Vasudev has to play this diplomacy 
duplicity. And it was in the interest of Krishna. So it is said that um, actually diplomacy is described by Shlabakti Vinotakor as kutinati. A devotee should not practice kutinati. One should not be duplicitous. But it is mentioned that for the service of the Lord, it is necessary. And we see that um, Ramananda Raya, he used diplomacy to soften their mind of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the Mandya Lila, chapter 12, verse 44, it says, Raja Mantri Ramananda Vyava Hari Nipuna Raja Priti Kahi Drivaila Prabhura Mana Sri Ramananda Rai was indeed a diplomatic minister of King Prataparudra. His general behavior was very expert and simply by describing the love, the king's love for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he gradually softened the Lord's mind. Also is mentioned how the entreaties of Sarabhuma Bharacharya was also able to influence Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to meet the king. So, diplomacy can be used in devotional service. Shri Prabhupada mentions that even Raghunath Das Goswami, when his parents were arrested by a government official, when they were in a danger of being arrested, he hit his parents, his, he hit his father and his uncle, and he personally met the government official and diplomatically solved the problem. When Sanatana Goswami was imprisoned by Nawab Hussein, he has to play diplomacy. He has to bribe the jail keeper. And he was released. So, Vasudev is using diplomacy in this situation in order to save the life of Devaki, who is to be the mother of Krishna. And therefore, that is considered devotional service. Anything done for Krishna's pleasure, anything done in the interest of Krishna is considered devotional service. And Krishna says, Mayi bhakti hi bhutanam amritvataya kalpate that by engaging in any activity for my service, the living entity attains to eternal life in the spiritual world. So, Vasudev is showing us by example that in dangerous situations like this, there is no other option but to adopt diplomacy. Shalvishra Chakravati Thakur says, after carefully considering the options by using his intelligence to its full capacity to determine the right course of action, Vasudev resorted to flattering Kamsa, who was the most sinful person, Papam. Vasudev smiled externally to show Kamsa that everything was all right. But factually, he was suffering internally. Which man in this world will be happy that there is a death threat on his wife on their wedding day? No. So Vasudev was in such a precarious situation. And so he has to resort to diplomacy in order to save 
his wife from the hands of Kamsa. Hare Krishna. I think I have some five minutes or so. Are there any comments or questions? You're welcome. Otherwise, we call it a day. Kali Yuga, what is untimely death? Kali Yuga? What is untimely death? Untimely death. <laughs> Actually, in Kali Yuga, everybody die on time. <laughs> because uh, <clears throat> people are not following the, uh, the right way of life. Everything in Kali Yuga is polluted. Air is polluted, water is polluted, food is polluted, our lifestyle is polluted, and therefore our lifespan is reduced. That is one of the symptoms of Kali Yuga. So in actually, in reality, in Kali Yuga, we are actually facing untimely death. Because we are supposed to live a hundred years. That is the number of years a living entity should experience in Kali Yuga. Every age has its own age. In Satya Yuga, they were living 100,000 years. In Treta Yuga, they were living 10,000 years. In Dwarapa Yuga, 1,000 years. And in Kali Yuga, 100 years. But how many of us will reach 100 years? Very, very few. So it means we are all dying untimely. So the, the whole life in Kali Yuga is untimely, untimely death. But the good thing is that by chanting Hare Krishna, by engaging in Krishna consciousness, by serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we are actually increasing our lifespan. Devahuti, in the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, says that the rising of the sun and the setting decreases everyone else's life except those who are engaged in Krishna consciousness. So, the devotee, by performing devotional service, is not subjected to Kala Chakra, the effects of Kala Chakra, because he is simply increasing his life. He is increasing his opportunity, his ability, his chances of entering the spiritual world. And therefore, he is not subject to this untimely death. If Krishna decides that, okay, come home today, that cannot be considered untimely death. If Krishna decides that today, please come home, it's glorious death. Like the case of Parikit Maharaj. He was a young king, but Krishna wanted him to go back home, back to Godhead. He accepted it. So, Kali Yuga is a, a time of untimely death, but we can, we can avoid untimely death by becoming Krishna conscious. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Grand Rashima Bhagavatam ki, Jai. Shana Prabhupada ki, Jai.